Welcome to Edgewater House and another in a series of videos on building a home to the passive house standard in Saco, Maine. This segment is about factory built roof trusses. I made the 300 mile trip to a rustic truss in Presque Isle, Maine to learn how they made our trusses. Sheldon Hyde of Aristic Trust. Hi Sheldon, how are you doing today? Hey, not bad. Tell us a little bit about the, um, the operation here at Aristic Trust. Probably 90% of our lumber comes from uh, uh, mills within 100 miles of, of, of our location uh, right here in the state of Maine. We do approximately uh, $3 million in sales. Uh, commercial sales we do about 20% and 80% uh, of that is residential. Uh, we uh, deliver trusses uh, all over the state of Maine. Uh, some into New Hampshire and some into Atlantic Canada. What's the advantages of a uh, truss build? Well, when you build a home or a commercial building with trusses, uh, one of the advantages you have is that you can span a lot larger distances in a clear span without the need for an internal bearing. Uh, most residential houses, we actually can limit now the bearings to the uh, to entire perimeter with no internal bearings. Um, some of the other advantages is the uh, speed as of which the uh, structure will go up, uh, saving both time for the end user as well as the, uh, the contractor that's building the structure. Um, you also get a peace of mind that the uh, structure is engineered to withstand our northern Maine and, and, and all of uh, New England snow loads and weather conditions. We start talking about the trusses for Edgewater House. In a three-dimensional image. Um, this allows me to be sure that once I import the trusses that um, they follow all the contours of the building. You can see that there are different pitches and slopes as well as valleys, etc. that need to be taken into account of. I can th also take the planes off of the building and I can go in and take a look at the connections and make sure that all of the connections are pro appropriate. Um, to match the drawings and the structural details that come with the engineer's drawings. If we take a look I asked Sheldon to point out some of the unique passive house features of the roof trusses. It has a really large heel height. Um, the heel height is one foot seven and a half inches, which is approximately five, five and a half inches taller than the norm, as well as it doesn't have the return for the soffit. Sheldon explained how the software flags design issues. Both um, written as well as uh, colorful flags, etc. You can see that this bottom cord is turned red. This is telling me that this actually uh, species of lumber or, or wood, which is southern yellow pine at the moment, is uh, not large enough in order to uh, pass that bottom cord. As well as it's telling me that the truss is deflecting too much or is uh, basically too much bend in the truss. Um, so it's telling me that I need to do something to repair that and then we'll analyze it again and now we see that the truss is plated and you, we see a lot of other uh, color codes as well any of the trusses that are gr uh, or webs that are green are uh, actually passing or over designed and the ones that are yellow and are brown are optimized. Mm -hmm. Sheldon you finished the design on our house what happens next? Okay well when we're all done with the designs um, the uh, project will go to an optimization stage. Um, they then will go to the cutting shop, um, a staging area, uh, to the manufacturing tables. Uh, they then get stacked and banded um, to another staging area where they're prepared for delivery. Let's, uh, can we go take a look? I am amazed at the size of the assembly table and the highly automated process. Sheldon's design is networked with all the production equipment. Production starts with selecting our job at the cutting machine and then feeding the right lumber into the saw. The software optimizes the cuts to minimize waste. Offcuts return on the conveyor belt to the waste bin.
fascinating. This is a computer-controlled compound miter saw that precisely measures length and angle of cut, then adds an identifying label on each piece. The pieces are stacked and banded, awaiting assembly. The same software causes metal stops to pop up on the assembly table, establishing a template for the truss. The pieces are pulled from the job cart and placed on the table. Magically, the assembly team begins to transform a collection of 2x4s into a giant truss. Pneumatic guns fire beefy staples to temporarily hold the wood in place. It's a nice tight fit that would make a Finnish carpenter proud. Metal plates are placed above and below the joints and tacked into place. It's the size, thickness, and placing of these engineered plates that keep the truss in equilibrium under load. The first of two rollers then moves across the trusses to embed the teeth of metal plates into the wood. Rollers pop up from the table and the completed truss is slid through a second and final press. There's a quick visual inspection of both sides of the truss and a random sampling QA program. So what is this tag over here? Is that it gives you the shape of the truss, the quantity of trusses like that, the truss number, your job name, everything. Here is some of our completed trusses ready for delivery. Someday soon, a truck like this will be delivering our trusses. Come see more about building a passive house at www.edgewaterhouse.com.